Welcome to another episode of We Don't Die, where my goal is to give you evidence that although our bodies will disappear, we survive physical death. When we aren't afraid of death, we are less afraid of life. From these episodes, I aim for all of us to take more risks in life, go after our dreams, have great relationships, and some fun in the process. I'm your host, Sandra Champlain, author of the number one international best-selling book called We Don't Die, A Skeptic's Discovery of Life After Death. And today on our show, I want to introduce you to Katerina St. Clair. Now, let me tell you a little bit about her. Katerina's healing gift started in childhood. She had unique psychic abilities that puzzled adult family members and the local community members who frowned upon such abilities being possible. At the age of 21, Katerina experienced a near death experience. We call them the NDEs. And this happened because she suffered a stroke from a brain aneurysm that ruptured because of taking birth control pills. Now this experience was so profound that it really made her psychic abilities even more extraordinary. And her positive outlook on life led her to donate many hours to church and community services, which she continues today. Many, many years later, after she became afflicted with a life-threatening disease, she did start focusing on the study of quantum medicine. Now, as a result of this journey, she created her own healing program. Katerina St. Clair invented the Miracle Advantage Method. And I'm delighted to say she's the author of the brand new book, Yes, Virginia, There is a Heaven. So welcome to We Don't Die, Katerina St. Clair. Hello, my friend. Hi, Sandra. How are you today? Yeah, I'm doing great. I'm just thrilled because I know you a bit, and I know you have an extraordinary story, and I feel super-duper blessed that you're here talking to us now. Well, I'm excited, too. I always love telling uh, bits and pieces or the whole story about my near-death experience in my life and how it led me to my uh, quantum medicine practice today. Yeah, and do you find when you tell the story it lights you up inside? Well, I can uh, I compare it to um, if anyone's ever had a PTSD moment where you relive that moment, that's uh, the general atmosphere that I experience when I tell it. I relive it as in the now. Wow. So it's it's very vivid for me even today, and it, it will be 35 years uh, on 12, 13, 14. Yeah, and you may be listening to this on 12, 13, 14, or after, but either way, she's, it's Katerina's 35th anniversary of having her near-death experience. Um, so uh, tell us a little bit about you, because the, the, the part about um, growing up psychic, and the, what kind of gifts did you have in childhood? Where did you grow up, by the way? What area? Oh, the I, okay. Um, I grew up in Kentucky. Yeah. Um. When I was two months old, I was adopted by a family, and uh, I grew up on a farm. Uh, it was a beef cattle farm. Uh, we raised all of our food, so we were constantly canning and uh, freezing our food, and everything was organic, so that was good. I mean, I enjoyed my time working on the farm and, um, you know, working with those type of activities. Um, I uh, later got married and uh, at that time was taking birth control pills, and that's when I had the near-death experience from that. Wow. What kind However, of... go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. I just, I was just, as a kid, what, do you remember what you're, t I mean, you mentioned you had unique psychic abilities. Yeah. That, like, what, what happened? What oh, did my you know? Goodness. Or just give us an uh, example or two. An example or two? Okay, let's see. When I was, um, well, I'll, I'll tell, um, an intervention that happened, okay. uh, divine, I call it divine intervention. Um, when I was three years old, I had a dog named Lassie. And if anybody is a baby boomer, they know who Lassie is. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, and um, when I would go inside, I always saw Lassie leave, you know, go out the yard and, and leave. And I thought, where does Lassie go? Right. So one day I decided to go with Lassie to see where she went and uh, my parents were out uh, and I guess they turned her back to me anyway I got out in the cattle field and I followed Lassie and Lassie headed right towards the cows so we went right down to where all the cows were 
um, I started to uh, go into the herd, and a cow that had tried to kill me two weeks before by ramming a fence where I had my head stuck through oh my gosh. Came, uh, came up and started pawing and throwing her head up and down and, you know, getting all excited. Well, about that time, here comes the bull on the other side of me, and he's doing the same thing. So I'm just standing there, you know, looking at them about three to four feet away. And uh, all at once, I had a robed hand come down and take my right hand, and I energetically heard, peace, be still. And the cattle started eating grass again. It was as if we were invisible, and we walked right between all the cattle and left out on the other side. And I remember when the hand let go of mine, I turned around, and the cattle were still eating grass. And we and Lassie and I walked on down to the neighbors, and that's, you know, that's that's a little example of kind of what my life was like. Um, wow. I've always had some kind of an interaction that was either divinely guided, or I've had a lot of interactions with, uh, I guess you would call it spirits, ancestors, um, uh, not you know, the dark side, but right. uh, loving loving spirits. Um, I found out later when I met my uh, birth family that one of my grandmothers had passed away about the time that I had an interaction where someone was sitting on the bed. I could physically feel someone sitting on the bed and patting me on the arm. And uh, I didn't feel scared or afraid or anything like that. It was just very loving a very loving presence so um i've i've had th those things happen over the years time and time again um when i was uh, dating my uh, ex-husband his grandmother passed away and uh well let's see how do i say this i was a teenager then i was asleep and all at once i woke up to a room uh, pungent in green apple smell hmm. I thought my goodness it was so strong it woke me up I could even taste it in my mouth it was so strong and I thought well I'm going to tell my mom this uh, she really didn't uh, consider the things that I told her as, as uh, anything to listen to or mm -hmm. she just re dis disregarded things that right. I would say and uh, so I um, told my uh, future mother-in-law about it and she became quite pale and I said what's wrong and she said that was my mother's favorite food wow um, and then there were other things I sure. started seeing seeing individuals and didn't know who they were until I started taking metaphysics classes that really opened uh, my psychic abilities up to know that I could interact and ask questions that's amazing. And, uh, wow. Yeah. I, I, I love this work. I can't tell you how much I enjoy uh, working with my ancestors. I've, I've asked them questions, you know, like, what's your name or, you know, how am I related to you? And I write it all down. Yeah. And then I get on the Internet and I research it. And that's exactly is what they told me. Oh. And I've never even heard of them before. <laughs> you just gave me goosebumps throughout my entire body. But being a kid, you know, I have to think that some of these things just felt normal to you, but they were weird to everybody else. Yes, very much so. Man, uh -huh. as and I didn't tell very many people. My my mother, my adopted mother, kept saying, "You know, people are going to think you're crazy or something's wrong with you." Of course, you don't tell anybody else. Don't tell anybody else. Man. So I just kind of kept it quiet. Sure, I didn't tell anybody. <laughs> as a kid, Katerina, I I so wanted magic to be real. You know, I'd have dreams that I could fly or like Bewitched mm -hmm. was the big TV show when I was a kid. And I just I tried to wiggle my nose and yeah. close my eyes and make things happen <laughs> and nothing happened. So it's really interesting because now the more interviews I do and even with my book and the stuff I've researched, it's like magic is real. It is mm -hmm. it may not look like it wiggling is. our nose, but we are so much more powerful than we know. So if you would fast forward to the age of 21 and what happened? Oh, wow. Um, well, when I started taking birth control pills, I started having uh, severe migraine headaches. Mm. 
Okay. And I was the type of person, I never had headaches. Um, so I thought, well, after a couple of months, this isn't going to stop. So I quit taking birth control pills. Mm-hmm. Well, the headaches didn't stop. Oh. Right. It did, that did not stop them from occurring. And they kept getting worse in intensity. I'd always had um, problems with low blood pressure. Yeah. And um, this really made it worse. I, on the day that I um, died, I uh, was in bed, and it was time for me to get up to go to work. I worked half a day at a little country bank in Kentucky. So I raised my head up, couldn't see. I thought, oh, my, I'm going to have to, I, I can't go to work if I can't see to drive. So I called my boss, and my boss knew that I had some health issues and mm-hmm. things. And um, so he he just kind of laughed, and he says, well, if you can't see, you don't need to drive. And, uh, you know, it was only half a day, and, and so he was okay with it. Um, then the next thing I thought, well, I'll just tell my mom, uh, let her know that I'm here and that I'm not working and I wasn't feeling well. So I went to the kitchen, and uh, one of my remedies for um, raising my blood pressure was drinking a can of Mountain Dew because mm-hmm. <laughs> it had a lot of caffeine in right. it and a lot of a lot of salt sure. as well. And uh, so I picked up a can of Mountain Dew, and I started drinking it, and I called her. And I said, uh, you know, that I was staying at the house, and about the time I said, uh, if you want to stop by, I heard something go in my left ear. And about that time, I felt something hot run over the top of my head and down my neck. Hmm. Um, and then I noticed my eyesight, which had improved with the caffeine, a little line had formed across my eyesight, and it started going down, just like you'd have a water in a water tank. And um, I thought, gosh, I said, you need to call an ambulance. This is There's something wrong. Um, by the time I made it to the front door, which is probably about 15 feet away, I couldn't see, and I was losing my hearing by then. So I unlocked the front door, and um, there was a chair. I wanted to make sure where it was because I didn't want to end up tripping or, or right. you know, passing out. Uh, so I made my way back to bed, and I thought, well, I'll lay down, and we'll see if my blood pressure will equalize like it usually did with low blood pressure. And uh, I kept feeling this sinking feeling. It was like a vortex or a, or a um, uh, it would be a, a, like it was sucking the very life out of me. Man. And it was going right through the pit of my stomach. And it felt like it was going through the floor. And I knew I'd never felt anything like that before. And um, I, instead of being afraid, though, I, this peace came over me. And I said, well, Father, I can't, you know, stop what's going on. But if uh, it's your will for me to die, you know, I, I can't stop it. So about then, all of my soul, my spirit, whatever you want to call this um, being that you have inside mm-hmm. the shell of a body, started pulling up. Uh, I, my energy field left my feet and traveled up my legs and landed about uh, in my stomach area. A- at the same time, all the energy from my fingertips and arms and everything accumulated in that area. And all at once, I just left. It, I could see this tube as I was leaving that had rings in it. And many years later, in the 80s, I saw a documentary on NOVA about an endoscope. It was a new procedure back then. And the rings that I saw was the endoscope in reverse. Wow. So um, when it, after I left my body, it seemed like there was a period of a, just a few seconds. Uh-huh. I, I was with this being. I, I wonder if it wasn't my, um, they call it your soul spirit collective, um, your counterpart that, that you have with you uh, at all times. I don't know what um, that is. I've not heard that oh, expression. Well, 
Oh, okay. Well, I've, I've heard several uh, people that I've worked with in the past, teachers and mentors, talk about that. So uh, maybe that's another show. But uh, anyway, a being, we'll, we'll say a guide, okay. appeared. And uh, this guide went with me down this dark tunnel. Uh, the tunnel was... I guess you'd call it damp. I remember kind of looking around and it looked na ew, ew, sticky, nasty. You know, maybe it was my esophagus. I have no idea. Uh -huh. But anyway, I did not like, you know, the tunnel. It was dark. And I remember when I got at the end, my toes clamped to the edge of this because there was a huge gulf, a, an existence that had no beginning and no end, absolutely nothing. And over on the left side, I could hear some muffled noises. I didn't know what it was. And about 1 o'clock right, at the right of me, I saw this little tiny pin dot of light. And it started getting larger and larger. And gently, um, um, the light came down where we were at. And over on the left, the, the, I noticed all these. I called them pods. I don't know what to call them other than that, but uh, the noise became louder and louder, and I told my guide, I want to go there to see why these people were so upset. Hmm. So we traveled to the left, and it was about 7 o'clock from where we were standing originally, and we went down uh, to where an open pod was available. And so my guide helped me get inside of it, and that was sealed up. And once I was inside, I didn't hear anything. I didn't see any light. It was just me, and it felt very cramped inside my spirit. It seemed like the shell was so much smaller than, than my energy field that it was very, very tight-fitting, too. There was no mm -hmm. movement. Okay. So... Um, at that time, you know, after a second or two of that, I thought, oh, my goodness, I can understand why they were so upset. So, again, I said, Father, if you know, intend for me to stay here, I can't do anything about it, but I do not want to be here. At that moment when I said I did not want to be here, that pod opened up. And I, could, I distinctly remember being helped out of this pod, and I could hear, you know, people just screaming. They were just in tortured and uh it, it was a very um well it, it was just a horrible situation oh yeah so, sounds very scary so, yes and about that time i saw the pin dot light come back and uh, it started getting larger so i told my guide i want to go there so we traveled up 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 uh, towards the light and when we uh came upon this gate it was a golden gate it was really two gates that closed in the center to make one and there were these beings uh, one had the head of a lion uh, the body of a man and the lower part of a lion or a bull I couldn't really tell because I couldn't see it had like a long tail like a cow or something uh -huh. and each one of them went to the center and they pulled open the big door or big gate as we walked in and I remember looking up and it just felt like we were ants compared to their size they were just so huge I, I, I have no idea how tall they were wow uh, so we walked into this garden beautiful garden um, had all kinds of trees and birds um, you know, just, well, I didn't see any birds, but I could hear them singing. Right. Um, I could uh, feel the warmth of the sun, or, which was the light, which was God, uh, beaming down into this uh, heavenly realm. And uh, so I saw the city up on a hill. There was, um, I guess you would call a fortress built around it. There was uh, walls with, as we went up, we saw... Uh, let's see, I think there were three gates on each of the four sides. That would be 12. And um, as we were on our way up, we had to pass this crystal lake. And when we went over it, 
I remember looking down, and I laughed, and I said, I must be dead. I don't have a body. And that was the first time it even came to my mind that I could even be dead. Oh. So, yeah, it, it, you know, and I laughed. I thought it was funny. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know why, but I did. Laughter's a good and, thing. But you, so yeah. you looked down expecting probably feet or like you're walking, and then there was just nothing there. Right, right. No reflection at all. Nothing. Weird. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, it really was. And so we went up another kind of a little hill uh, to one of the gates that we had seen from above. And I asked which gate this was, and they said the tribe of Dan, D-A-N. So um, the next thing, uh, well, I'll tell you what the door looked like. Uh, the door was encrusted with jewels of, of every kind. It had emerald, gold, uh, mm-hmm. rubies, diamonds, uh, and a huge big pearl in the center. So when we were, arrived at the door, it opened. And when it did, I remember it startled me. And um, so the next thing that we saw as the, as, after the door completely opened was uh, a town or a city inside. I remember looking down, and I could see bricks. And uh, they radiated like blacktop in the distance on a hot summer mm-hmm. day. And uh, I thought, well, can I step on these? Will this hold me? <laughs> And uh, so I, I went inside with my guide, and I could hear all these beautiful songs. These angels were singing uh, praises to God, and it was just all very beautiful. Although I couldn't see them, uh, I could hear them talking. I never saw any person. I never saw anything except the beings that opened the gates at the beginning. Uh-huh. And um, so we went down this corridor. And uh, the next thing I remember, uh, I said I wanted to go to the light, which I could see behind this, um, looked like a flapping curtain. So um, my guide told me then, he said, I cannot go with you there. And he said, you have to remove your shoes. You're on holy ground. So I remember taking my shoes off. This, you know, I didn't have shoes on originally, but... Apparently, I had some kind of energetic shoes or yeah. or heavenly shoes or whatever, so I took them off, and I walked over to the edge of the um, curtain, and I remember I had to go in bowing. I could not look upon the light. Um, it was so strong. I ended up laying face down, and I covered my head, um, and I said, I don't want to be here. And I the next, and I'm, I was told, uh, it is not your time. You have a purpose. And with that said, I was sent to a room. It was like a library, and I was shown these slides or little short videos of things that to happen in my future. I never saw anything that you know that had happened up until then. It was just future events. Interesting. Okay. Uh huh. And uh, so. After I was shown these slides, they started out really slow so I could see who the people were and maybe hear a word here and there or, you know, just get the gist of what the event was about. Then uh, as time, uh, as I lived longer, uh, it came so fast or quickly that it was a blur. Mm -hmm. Well, once that happened, I immediately was at the top of my bedroom, uh, at my ceiling, and I looked down at my body. I could see, I mean, I could see I was dead. I know I was dead. And uh, so I arranged my spirit, and I floated downward, and I can still remember touching the top, the back of my heels, touching the top of my toes, and I just sunk right back into my body. Wow. Well, as soon as I engaged with my body, I remember taking a big, deep breath and opening my eyes. And I started looking around the room, and I looked over at the clock, and I had been gone 10 minutes. That's it. Almost, yeah, almost 10 minutes, if not 10 Mm -hmm. minutes or a little more. My mother came in the room. She said, you look like a dead person. (laughs) 
which I could let laugh. And the paramedics were right behind her. Well, the paramedics were not happy. Uh, one was trying to get a blood pressure, and one was trying to take my pulse. Oh, see, is that right? Yeah. <laughs> and one said, she has no blood pressure, and the other one said, she has no pulse. We're going to lose her. Oh, and I my. smiled at them, and I said, I've already been dead. Well, then they really started shaking. And finally, after what seemed two or three minutes, you know, I here I am talking to them, and they're saying they can't get any readings at all. All at once, they got a very, very faint uh, blood uh, or a heartbeat mm -hmm. and uh, or a pulse. And so they loaded me up on the gurney and took me out to the ambulance, and then I uh, started my journey to the hospital, which was about a 30-minute drive. And by the time I got halfway over there, all my vitals had returned to normal. Um, I, you know, I noticed that I, my mouth was numb. Um, when they took me in the, into the emergency room, this emergency room doctor looked at me and he said, how old are you? And I told him, and he says, oh, you just fainted. I'm not running any tests. Just go home. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so uh, my ex-husband, or my husband at the time, um, you know, came and got me from work. He was all upset, of course, and uh, I reassured him, you know, I'm going to be okay. I just want to go home and go to sleep. Yeah. So I didn't, pu I didn't push the matter of running any tests or anything because I knew where I'd been, and there was no way they were going to talk me out of it or yes. anything like that. And um, so um, uh, I noticed within a day or so that my speech was affected. Um, most of my grammar skills were gone. Uh, I my mouth on the left side from about mid chin over to the left about cheek level mm -hmm. uh, was numb and I couldn't smile for a number of years. Wow. Um, you know it 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 was a stroke. Of course, so, um, right? Yeah, and uh, but I've taken this story and uh, funeral directors have uh, told me people that they were worried about uh, committing suicide. And uh, I would go and tell them my story. The one thing I want people to know from my journey, or the one thing that I take away from it, is that you need to say, uh, you, you need to ask to go to the light. I really feel that these people that were in pods or purgatory or whatever you want to call it, I really feel like they feel uh, unworthy to go to heaven. And this is a self-imposed, um, area where they've ended up and if they had the knowledge to know that all they have to do is ask to be released then um, you know that's to me that that's what the message is they need to know that they all they have to do is ask and um, you know they can be brought out of that pod and, not, and not suffer like that so interesting a few days ago I had Tina Irwin on the show and she's a retired um, Navy commander mm. 20 years in the Navy and so you know pretty believable person you know and she she does what she calls uh, ghost helping and I you know I'm trying to get my head around what that was but she was saying after our bodies die what she called it is this fourth dimension and it's mm -hmm. interesting because the way you're talking about these pods and that experience, and even from having some of the other guests on in the past, they would say they went to this place that, like, you know, you said it felt damp and and mm -hmm. and that, but people felt, like, very uneasy or there was feelings of um, suffering and things like that. Mm -hmm. And whether they instinctively prayed or some people, they saw that like pinprick of light. And then as they would concentrate on it, it would grow larger and then they'd kind of move through it. So it's just because I just interviewed her a few days ago, I'm just thinking mm -hmm. about that, that it, it takes prayer mm -hmm. to move through. I, I, you know, I obviously haven't experienced it to get it, but now I'm hearing something that I've heard a number of times. So good to have the power of prayer and faith yes wow interesting and, and what was so interesting too was every slide that i was shown slowly i it came to pass 
exactly the way it was shown to me. And I knew things that were going to happen up to 20, 25 years in the future. I just kind of waited around until I, I heard the news that was leading up to it or uh, even a job. It led up to a job. So, um, And then I had a very beautiful experience when um, I joined the church that I went to. And um, I was up front, and my energetic body was drawn to this window. And I saw this loving light, and I knew exactly who it was. And it came shining down on me. And this energetic dove came in and sat on my shoulder. And all I could do was cry. So everything got, your psychic abilities just really became even more powerful, didn't they? Yes. Very much so. And I use it to help people with closure. Um, With my metaphysics uh, business, the Miracle Advantage, I uh, work with uh, energetic um, emotional releasement techniques and things like Mm -hmm. that to try to help people have closure, especially if they lose a loved one. I bring in my story, and I also help them by uh, sometimes receiving messages from their loved one that's passed. And um, all, all of it's very beautiful work. Oh, it's it a really huge is. gift to people to be able to do that. What? How did you get interested in the whole world of quantum medicine? That doesn't sound like a, a, a normal thing people <laughs> look into. No, no, it's not. Um, after I came back, I um, had a couple of children, and um, I started uh, working for the government. I started uh, writing grants and uh, doing all kinds of uh, different types of work. Mm -hmm. And um, there was a lot of emotional, um, I guess you would call it trauma type things that were going on in my life. And um, I started uh, developing um, chronic mono uh, when I was under a lot of stress. Um, And also uh, in the early Let's see, what was it? About 2004, I, that was the time period that I found my birth family, my birth mother first. And uh, so I started a, a life with them, and um, I was able to um, get some answers about the strokes and everything. That was a family. The brain aneurysm was something that uh, her grand, my birth mother's grandfather died of. He had two sons that died of it. Another, wow. another great uncle of mine died. Uh, then it skipped her mother's generation, and then her oldest sister. She was her oldest sister uh, died of a brain aneurysm. Her son died of one. Uh, her oldest brother died of one. She has uh, another sister that has a brain aneurysm that they watch. So, um, you know, if I'd known that uh, up front, I, I don't think an OBGYN would have um, prescribed any kind of, um, you'll have to excuse the airplane flying That's okay. <laughs> That's what they do. <laughs> uh, but I don't think that he would have given me birth control pills. I, right. I know, you know, anybody, anybody worth their weight in gold would have would avoided that at all expense, but... Um, you know, anyway, that that's part of my life journey. I mean, that um, changed my life. And you were asking why I went into that. The last illness I came down with was a goiter and six nodes. And uh, I stayed in bed a whole lot. I got to the point where I couldn't work. Um, I tried Synthroid and all the other um, thyroid medications, and none of them helped. Mm-hmm. Uh, about that time, I had a girlfriend, and she had a business that the EPA was doing tests around uh, the area, and they said that um, it had the highest incidence of uh, thyroid cancer in the world. Wow. So uh, I thought, well, it's time to leave. Uh, my youngest had graduated from college, and uh, so I thought, it's, it's time for me. I have to for my health. And so I left Kentucky, and I moved uh, to uh, greater Las Vegas area, and uh, that was in 2012. So I've been out here for a couple of years. 
Uh, prior to that, I started my uh, journey in uh, first in the um, Healing Beyond Borders, um, uh, studying it because they had so many, um, I guess you call it research studies and things that uh, proved that what their work was involved with, uh, it was real. Uh, that meant a lot to me when I first started uh, doing the research. I thought, well, I want to study with a credible group sure. that um, you know ha- has credibility in the community. A lot of nurses study Healing Touch, or yes. which is now that program. So I studied levels one through four. I was unable to get my certification in it because I moved and there was not a practitioner to work with locally. Mm -hmm. So then I next started studying quantum touch with Richard Gordon and became a certified quantum touch practitioner a couple of years ago, about the time I moved out here. And uh, then I went on to take a class. It was called Simply Healed by Carolyn Cooper out of St. George, Utah, uh-huh. and uh, she really helped me in the ability of knowing that I can work with my ancestors, that I can ask questions, and she does not promote the psychic abilities and other things that I do with, with the knowledge that she shared, you know, in the class, so um, because her husband is a bishop in the Mormon church, I did not want to... Um, cause any problem with her. Sure, be very controversial, sure. Yes, I did not want to cause any problem there, so I decided not to become a certified practitioner with her, but I did take all the classroom work that you have to have. I just didn't send in some paperwork and stuff that you needed for certification. Uh, I've also studied uh, color therapy and sound therapy. I'm certified in each one of those. Wow. And um, my focus was... I want to learn more. I was just like a sponge. Yep. I I wanted to learn as much as I possibly can, not only to help my thyroid, which I don't have a goiter or six nodes anymore, and I've had blood work and I can prove it's gone. And, you know, I I want to be able to help people. I want to help people with uh, PTSD, uh, which I suffered uh, some from, um, uh, horrible divorce and some other things in my uh, early childhood. And I, I just want to help people uh, realize that there's more than just what you see here on this earth. Um, it, heaven is real, and, um, you know, there's no doubt in my mind, um, you know, that everything, that God is in control and everything is on time. There's no mistakes. Um, it, it's uh, a very peaceful uh, feeling, knowing that uh, we're all brought together when we're supposed to be, and we're we're just working towards a common goal of peace and love, and um, it, it's just all it, the the work is just beautiful. So I, I can't say enough. Nothing to be um, afraid of. No. No, I, I, I know uh, some people do not believe in past lives. Uh, I didn't believe in past lives until I found out it was part of my thyroid issue. And um, when I found that out, um, I, I found out some other things as well about uh, some previous times that I had been here on this earth and some things that had happened. And I think that if you talk with most uh, energy workers or light workers, you're going to find a component of fear, and the fear is based on persecutions in these previous lifetimes. A lot of people don't remember their previous lifetimes or anything that happened during that time period, but if you can tap into that, and um, you can find out a lot of uh, reasons why you're drawn to certain things in this time, uh, this lifetime, and, and, um, well... It's it's more than what I could uh, tell you. How are people able to tap into that? Do they have to see somebody to do that? Well, for me, when I started doing this work, it opened many doors. And all I had to do was ask, you know, do I have a previous lifetime? I also have a wonderful mentor. Her name is uh, Catherine Anderson, and she lives in Nashville, Tennessee, and we usually uh, talk at least once a week, and we work on different uh, projects, we call them. 
Um, <laughs> our, yeah, we call them projects. That's we, funny. Um, we work on each other, our health issues, or you know, see if there's any health issues, and uh, we we check on. Um, oh my goodness, we do land clearings, we do uh, uh, home clearings, uh, we work with elementals. Uh, she does more shamanistic type work and has studied with Rosalind Briere and, um, oh, my goodness, who all has she studied with? It, it's who she hasn't. She's, she's personally studied with Greg Braden. Um, my goodness. You've gotten um, into so much. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I said gosh. I was a sponge. <laughs> yeah, but you're just going on and on and on. It's, just, it's, it's fascinating because it's like when you – one door opens to one thing, and then all of a sudden you learn it, and then something else opens, and then something yeah. else opens. So if this is, you know, if, if when we find our passion, it, that's, I guess, what ends up happening. Yeah. So I want to know. All... Oh, sorry to interrupt you. No, I just want to hear more about your miracle advantage method, because it's so controversial to use the mi word miracle these days. <laughs> but, I, you know, I believe in them. But... I, what the heck is a healing program called the Miracle Advantage Method? Okay. Uh, the Miracle Advantage Method is, is a, uh, I guess you would call it a collection of all of the studies I've been telling you about. Right. Um, I have an area that we uh, discuss color therapy, the therapeutic value of it. Uh, all of this is scientifically based. I mean, it's not some kind of a woo-woo thing that... I just made up in my head. Right. <laughs> I have a lot of uh, scientific background for everything that I do. So um, we talk about color therapy, and then uh, we also discuss sound therapy, the benefits of uh, uh, therapeutic sound um, chambers and things like that. Um, this is the introductory level I'm speaking about. Uh, then we talk about essential oils and other tools such as crystals, uh, your I call it your clairs, which is uh, clairvoyance, et cetera, that uh, you can develop on your own. Uh, then we talk about uh, therapeutic touch and uh, how you, you can exchange energy uh, in your energy fields in order pr to promote healing. Uh, then we talk about emotional releasement. Um, of course, like I said just a moment ago, I love working with uh, angels, ancestors, and guides, and uh, they provide us with so much information, and especially the emotional component usually goes hand in hand with the hands-on healing work. Uh, sometimes you can just put your hand on a certain area and invoke a memory, uh, you know, a, maybe a highly emotional type, you had an injury of a certain nature, and you put your hand there and you'll relive that moment. And by reliving it, you can also release that, and it doesn't bother you anymore. So there's a That's lot of... That's uh, a miracle. It is. And this is something you teach people. Is that correct? Yes. How, or like people become a practitioner of this? Or yes. Is that... Yes. Um, uh, I was telling you about the introductory level. Yeah. Then we have levels one and levels two, which uh, each one of those uh, are live classes. The introductory class is just... Uh, a class in order to kind of give the individual an idea of what uh, they what will be covered, just a grant, uh, just an overview more or less. And each one of the classes is where we, uh, you know, develop these abilities of being able to detect um, uh, differences in the energy fields, to detect maybe, you know, here here is a pulled tendon or, you know, different things too. Plus, uh, well, doing this type of work, I've, I've become a medical intuitive in which I can actually see in the body and be able to see where there's inflammation and, uh, and other uh, things that's going on. So um, now everybody will advance at, with their own gifts, and they may be stronger in one area than another. That's why I want to offer them these five different methods so they can excel in what they're good at. Most of the other modalities only offer you one way. And, you know, this is the only way you can do it, or, you know, we do it this way and that's it. Mine is, is very uh, open-minded, 
and allows for the practitioner to develop their own style the way I developed mine. So that is uh, very important to me, not to strap um, a practitioner in any mindset that you have to do it in a certain sequence or anything like that. Is this something, Katerina, that anybody can do with if, if they have the interest and intent, or is it something you have to be gifted and that you turn them away saying, nope, you don't have what it takes? I think if you have the yearning to do something like this, mm-hmm. that you're being drawn in that direction, and then you should try it. Um, at least that's how I was when I started studying. Right. I had no idea where to start. And uh, so I just went with my gut feeling or my intuitiveness, and that's that's how I got started. Wow. And a little bit about... I mean, it's bold to say miracles, but are, are there any stories you have of yourself or a practitioner that had made has made a difference in somebody's life? Um, excuse me a second. I sure. wanted to take a drink of water. No problem. Well, I'll tell our listener that Katerina's website um, for this is miracleadvantage.com. And then, of course, if you go to wedontdieradio.com, you can see Katerina's beautiful picture. And I'll also have a link to her book, Yes, Virginia, There is a Heaven, and a link to miracleadvantage.com. So always please feel free to use the wedontdieradio.com website to um, see past guests and, and get in touch with our guests and learn more about the things that they're up to. So are you ready to talk again, my friend? Uh, we'll see. Okay. <laughs> well, keep that water that. close. <laughs> no, that's what happens. And and we're recording this in the winter time, and I've had lots of mm-hmm. guests with coughs, and it, it just happens. So you're. Human. Oh, okay. So l- let's uh, let's talk about miracles, though, and things that have been produced. If if um, if you might share okay. a story or two. All right. Um. Let's see. What can I say? Um. Um, like I said, my, my focus that I love to work with is with ange- a- angels, ancestors, and guides. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a person uh, come uh, to a session, and um, she was open. Uh, she had some knowledge about her family genealogy, and she was wanting to know some more about a grandmother that she felt like there was a curse on. And so we, um, you know, started talking, and that ancestor came forward and provided some information, and she said, I want to release this DNA component, this emotional component. It's called epigenetics that attaches to our DNA that gives us our personalities or, you know, we carry baggage with us. Um, So I spoke with the... um, lady and uh, she was willing she said yes she said I'm tired of not having uh, a good relationship or having a marriage or or uh, anything like that and she said I really want to get rid of this I want to get behind me so the ancestor came forward and we did our releasement technique which I would teach and um, all at once, she had waves of energy hit her, and um, she uh, she started crying. And a lot of times when you have emotional releasement, it, it's so beautiful and so wonderful. You just feel this weight lifted off of you that uh, you you will cry or you, you will experience euphoria from knowing and having this leave you. And it does change people's lives. Um, she n- is now married, and um, you know she just said it completely changed her life. And not only did it change her life, it goes back to that ancestor and all of the descendants and all the lines forward. It pulls out whatever that little epigenetic component was, so that does not pass forward uh, to your descendants or anything. It's it's gone. Oh, that's crazy wonderful like i just yeah you've opened up something so new to me that i'm not even sure what to ask how about <laughs> any physical ailments that it's made a difference for yes um and and i also do long distance work 
I had a friend that lived in Tennessee, um, uh, Catherine, my mentor, was telling me about her. Uh, she'd gone to the doctor and was supposed to have knee surgery. Mm -hmm. And she asked me if I would work on her knee. So I zeroed in using my uh, medical intuitiveness, and I could see what was wrong with her knee. So I uh, replaced the disc energetically and, and did some more uh, strengthening of some tendons and things that were in her, in her knee. Um, then um, a few days later, I um, asked, Catherine to uh, see if she had heard anything and she said yes she said her knee was fine that she was walking on it and everything it was perfect well nothing wrong no pain no nothing but the story goes on <laughs> she goes back to this orthopedic doctor yeah and uh, he talks her into having surgery anyway well she has the surgery and she contacts our, our friend again, Catherine, and Catherine calls me and she said, uh, so-and-so, you know, went with the doctor's recommendation and had the knee surgery. And she said, now she's in worse pain than she suffered before, oh. you know, you, you worked on her. And she said, can you, know, can you work on her again? So I checked in and I could see that the doctors, re it, it was almost like they <sighs> scraped the inside of her knee it was very jagged the cartilage and everything was so um, I worked well when I say I it's, it, I'm just a facilitator I, mm -hmm. I see what's going on and uh, so all of the edges were rounded off and um, you know her, her knee was worked on again and uh, she doesn't have any pain at all and she gets along just fine that's so, amazing uh, yeah, I, 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 like I said, I love doing this work. Um, I, oh, I can tell you another one. Sure. I'm uh, enjoying I listening. Was, <laughs> I was working with a person I uh, previously knew. Uh, he said, well, I want to try one of these sessions. And I said, okay. So we were talking, and like I said, I work with ancestors, angels, and guides, and I got a word that said that he had a heart issue and I said this is something on that came down through your dad's side I think it's about grandfather great-grandfather I heard great-grandfather uh, side and uh, they want to release it and he says oh okay well let's just do it so we did <laughs> and a few days later he contacted me and, and I said well how, how are you doing and he says I just want to tell you what a change you made and I said, really? And he said, yes. He said, I used to get on the treadmill, and I could go about three minutes before I had to start slowing down. He said, after our session, I can go nine straight minutes without slowing down. Wow. So something's definitely happening. It, it definitely is. And I love that you can do it long distance. I mean, we are just... You know, we can't see the um, radio waves that are connecting us right now, but they are. They're very mm -hmm. real. We can't see the Internet signal around us, and that's very real, and it's invisible. And um, I know in my past and in my book, I actually teach people remote viewing, how you can see mm -hmm. elements of something someone has on their coffee table halfway around the world. And, like... It, we are connected. We are so much more powerful, and it totally makes sense um, how the power of prayer works, and the in the distant healings and uh, distant clearings, and like it's it's a wonderful conversation. It's really cool that you found your passion, and now you're sharing it with others and making a difference, and teaching people how to do that. Yes, that's some good stuff, Katerina. <laughs> I'm so Thank proud you. of you. I really am. I I really am. I just, I love um, to learn and I love to share. And I love when I get to talk to somebody that a whole new world gets opened up. And that's what you did for me now. Um, oh. That's awesome. How about the book? Let's talk about that. Yes, Virginia, right. there is a heaven. So congratulations with the book. And mm -hmm. uh, anything you want to share about that? Well, I think I more or less went over the story yep. lightly. I go into more detail, believe it or not, in the book. Yeah. Um, but um, 
Uh, it, you know, like I said, it was my journey to and from heaven after having a, a brain aneurysm rupture. Um, uh, it will be on uh, Kindle this Saturday, uh, 12, 13, 14, which is the 35th anniversary of, of that event. And uh, it will be free on Saturday. It uh, will? As, wow. Yes, as the, Ken, as the Kindle Select. Yeah. Um, I believe in, um, you know, helping people and getting the word out. Mm -hmm. uh, to me, it's very important that they hear what, uh, what uh, the message is in that book. And, uh, you know, especially with the Christmas season and everything here, I want, I want them to at least have a chance if they go on that uh, date uh, to get a free copy. Uh, so, um, and then the soft cover copy is scheduled to come out, and I chose the Ides of March of all times for it to come out, <laughs> um, and that way they can have it in paperback. Yeah, I, I'm that type. I, I very often will buy a book on Kindle, and it's so easy because you don't need to have an actual Kindle anymore. You could read something on your computer, or if you have an iPhone, or... Um, any kind of device an mm -hmm. iPad it's so so easy to read there's no there's mm -hmm. no reason to not uh, download a book these days it really isn't um, but it is fun to get the actual book in your hand oh, oh yeah. Katarina thank you so much I you've left me with just a tremendously um, huge smile on my face oh no, well, good <laughs> it's just another way of knowing not only that we don't die, but we are so much more powerful than we know. Um, and and I love that you kept following your passions and new doors opened and now you're sharing it and um, making a difference for others. So thank you for that. And gosh, you're awesome. Pretty oh, much. thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you've left me speechless, which doesn't normally happen, but you have. Oh. So I think just looking at the clock, it's time to close the episode. Oh, okay. Do you have any final words for our listeners? Because you know what? Uh, There's a lot of pain and sadness, and it is the holiday times right now that we're recording this, and we have mm -hmm. lost loved ones. And I don't know, anything you're drawn to say right now in closing? Um. All I can say is I hope the message in the book provides the answers uh, that you seek. And um, as uh, Sandra says, we do not die. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, anytime anybody wants to have a session with me or, um, you know, wants to attend uh, any of my uh, programs that I'm developing, please uh, drop me a line at, at Katerina at MiracleAdvantage.com, and uh, we'll see if we can set up a session or something like that. Yeah, you, it's clear, Katerina, that you're just somebody who likes to give and make a difference. And it's, it's more than, uh, I mean, I know things cost money and your time is involved and all that, but it, there's some people that are out to make a buck and there's other people that are out to make a difference. And it's just so clear you're out to make a difference so that people have extraordinary lives. So thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being on the show. And, and to our listener, thank you for taking the time to listen. You know, it's really awesome. There's a, just a huge group of people that are now following this, um, this radio show. And I'd love to hear from you if you go to we don't die radio dot com there's a contact Sandra there um but I'd love to hear from you uh, what are you thinking how's it going um be part of the community uh, I may start a Facebook group for all of the listeners and that we can um work together on some of the challenges that we have and and connect some people to people they might not have normally known exist uh you're a special person if you're taking the time to listen to this right now and i do hope that this show and all the other ones of course have made a difference in your life so in closing i just want to say again thank you to katarina st Clair. her website is miracleadvantage.com she's got the new book coming out or is out by the time you listen to this yes virginia there is a heaven so this is sandra champlain i believe that life is an education for the soul and that your life here is important so i just want to say thank you again and we'll see you soon mm -hmm.